Hey, this is Christian Buckley with Collab Talk, and I'm here with John White with Tigraph and Unlimited Vids. Hey. How are you doing, Christian? Good to see Good to be on this. Yes, I know. So, well, you've been sponsoring. You know, thanks for the continued support. We've been, This is on the – I'm trying to remember, like, when you guys got involved in sponsoring these. It's been, like, seven years? We talked about it at the airport leaving Ignite in Atlanta. So what year was that? That was three years ago. No, no, no. You've been sponsoring. You've been you've been maybe involved. It was long, maybe it was four jams. years ago. It, 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 Atlanta 2016 is the answer. Yeah, it's four years ago. Holy cow. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you guys were involved prior to that because the development of the, the analytics tools, but it's officially sponsoring it, yeah, like four yeah, or five years. Right. But yeah. 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 All right. So uh, the well, the topic for today, of course, uh, was takeaways from Microsoft Ignite. And uh, did you participate as much as you had hoped in the event? Well, it depends depends on what you mean by hoped. Um, I hoped I'd have been there in person and participated yeah. a lot more. Um, yeah. In terms of what my expectations were for the online event, yeah, I did. I, I was uh, I was able to focus on it and uh, and got a significant amount out of it. Yeah, I you know I'm interested. I didn't ask this as part of the tweet jam today, and it didn't really kind of come come up, but. Um, did you participate in any of the non-session activities, just a pure community? Like they had yoga sessions going on and other kind of collaborative community activities. I didn't do a single one. I, Neither did I. Okay. I've not found anybody that I know okay. that that went and did any of those. No, I think I think they're you know they're they're in the right in, they're they're meant well. Yeah. Yet, I, I wonder if there needs to be the volume. I, I, who knows? Who knows what the numbers are? You know? yeah, yeah, maybe we're introducing bias. I don't know. but uh, And I also I didn't look at yesterday or today the stats, the Tygraph stats for the yeah, event. I did. Um, and it, it's it, uh, a little it, – it's interesting because, of course, the time frame is a little uh, – it's, it's only two and a half days this time, right? It's, it's yeah. split into two. Um, Ignite's normally four and a half days, so this event's just a little more than half the event time of the of the usual event. Um, and if you look at the the Twitter traffic, it's a little more than half. So it's pretty much lining right up with in line with the the previous events. Um, maybe a little bit more, but I think that would be expected due to the online nature of this. I mean, everybody's sitting there. On on their computers anyway. Why not have a Twitter open window open beside that? It's easier than banging back and forth on your smaller screen, etc. So hey, yeah, there was a hear, lot of good traffic though. Did, did Microsoft share any numbers about um, online participation? This somebody asked this not question yesterday, and was trying and was wondering about because uh, I think if I rem am remembering that for Build, they had said that there was something like two hundred fifty thousand people. That oh, wow. at one point touched the event. Um, uh, I haven't heard. I haven't heard any of that. No. Okay. no. All right. Well, that's Twitter all right. Twitter traffic about forty five thousand tweets. Um, about four hundred fifty thousand impressions. And I know last year we million. You mean? That's right? what I meant. Four hundred fifty yeah. million. Thank you. Um, and it uh, it had, it had topped a billion uh, at Ignite last year. So that's that's yeah. number sticks in my head. Wow. Yeah, that's right. Well, let's yeah. jump into this. So seven questions to the Tweet Jam today. Love to hear kind of your takeaways from each of these. So question number one, in your opinion, what was the biggest announcement of the week for Microsoft Ignite and why? <laughs> uh, me? Well, I mean, I don't, don't forget the, the world I live in is uh, the world I live in is Power BI. Yeah. Um, and hands down, the biggest, uh, biggest uh, announcement of, of the event was the it's it's a combination of two things really, and one one leads to the other. It's generation two architecture for uh, premium capacities in Power BI, that, and that's become now a set of features in addition to just a, a sharing capability, um, as well as a pr uh, premium per user licensing policy. So uh, smaller organizations don't necessarily have to buy the farm and get the you know the the, the big skew up front. They can price per user if uh, if the economics don't match. And there are some differences in the uh, sharing capabilities with it, but uh, no longer do these guys have to be left out in the cold. So that was that's really the biggest one for me. Well, that's great. Yeah, I know that there. Uh, once we look at the stats from the uh, Tigraph, uh, you know, 
stats that are that made available and all included in the blog and the link within the body of this uh, video description. Um, but to, I love you know going back through now. If you've added on the the final tab, so it's all out in Power BI. If you've not gone out and see this Tigraph tweets, uh, uh, you can find it via Twitter on Tigraph tweets. The link, John, I'm sure you shared it half a dozen times. Link.tigraph.com forward slash collab talk. Pretty there easy. you go. And on the last, if you miss the tweet jam, you can actually go to the last tab and go through all of the tweets that use the collab yep. talk hashtag during that the hour. And uh, reading through people's responses, that's always because uh, like certain things that stuck out for me, like certainly uh, uh, SharePoint syntax was a big deal. The first yep. product that's, or service yep. that come out of Project yep. Cortex, um, the virtual commute stuff, kind of the softer stuff that's necessary to break up the workday and help people have a more balanced online life. I think all that effort is really good. Uh, I also, uh, I thought was a huge announcement was the Dynamics 365, the Azure communication service, the uh, omni-channel end-to-end yes. -end phone solution is massive. Go take a look at that. Yep. That was Julia White demo. Really. It is, and it's not gotten as much play as it probably should. It, it's, uh, it's plumbing, but it's really important plumbing. I know a couple of the folks that were on the tweet jam that are uh, the unified communication folks, Tom Arbuthnot um, and Adam Ball both brought that up and I retweeted. And that's a huge one because that's like part of my past world as well. So prior to, to the SharePoint life. Uh, and so it's, it's great to see that progress. Uh, so definitely go check that out. All right. So question number two, oh, let me jump back over to it. Uh, is uh, what were the primary themes of this year's Microsoft Ignite event? Oh, remote work, right? I mean, you, you heard the word resilience over and over again, but I right. think it yeah. came back to remote work. Um, I think, you know, my, 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 I always have a little bit of snark in my comments, but uh, what? <laughs> my, you, my, John, what? <laughs> my, my, my slightly snarky uh, comment was uh, it, it seemed to be the theme was look at how our technology is integrating with Microsoft Teams. Which is yeah. <laughs> no, remote work, and I mean, why wouldn't you, right? Because Teams has had some such amazing adoption in the last few months to support remote work. Uh, it's done a great job of it. Um, yeah, everybody wants to jump on that bandwagon. Yeah, no, it was was great, and I think you're exactly right. I mean, resilience, I think, was the was the number one takeaway, and certainly there were other other you know smaller themes there, but I think that's what most people certainly from today's tweet jam uh, were talking about and looking for um, you know answers to a lot of the uh, top feature requests are are work from home based. Um, yeah. All right. So yeah. question three, was there anything missing from the Microsoft Ignite product announcements that you wanted to hear? Yeah, yeah, that's an easy one for me. It's the uh, price for the pr premium per user SKU in Power BI. They announced this brand new SKU. It's going to fix this b bottom end of the market. Uh, oh, how much is it going to cost? We're not saying yet. What? <laughs> if your news is a SKU, yeah, I think the well, price is a pretty important piece of information to include. You know what? I was thinking talking. about this like a month ago. I was talking with a client uh, uh, about. Uh, uh, their website and website redesign and guidance of Microsoft partner and guidance from Microsoft. And that I, I was referencing, there was something I don't have it. It was a month ago, the discussion, uh, but Microsoft was recommending, Hey partners, you should always include pricing when you're going to make an announcement about a service oh, yeah. that's out there. And it's like the number one complaint from customers. And yet it's the number one complaint. Microsoft goes and announces something, and I say the number two behind it, when they announce something, get everybody jazzed up about it, not have the pricing, and also two, have no information of when the API capability around the new features will be available. And yeah. that was, that came up a couple times today as well. It's, it's There's a real practical reason for this. This isn't just, I want to know what the price is, or I want to complain about whatever the price is, or anything like I actually- Well, I, that's I, just I, a given. I, 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 I completely trust that the price is going to be where it needs to be because the whole point of this is to aim at the uh, smaller end of the market. But, but as a when you're designing a system, the 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 not only the the price of the license but the structure of the license is an important component when you're designing a system. Do, do, do I go this way or do I go that way? And it's often a cost consideration. So you need to know this stuff. So it's going to delay people, you know, thinking about uh, deploying this stuff. It bugs me, but anyway. Well, like, 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 think of that in terms of like the consumer experience, go to the grocery store, brand new product you've been waiting for, it's all out there, there's no price on it. Well, how much is this? Just just give us your credit card number, just yeah. give us a blank check for this, 
Come the back next- the day it comes. Yeah, come back the day it comes in the store. How about pre-order this product? Well, how much is it yeah. going to be? Well, we'll tell you the day it ships. That's what? Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. I, yeah. I was going to say that there's, you know, there's there's a precedent for them not announcing the licensing on that. I, I think there's room. Yeah, for- I know we've always done it this way before. It doesn't mean it's a good thing. Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, question number four was: Has the shift to online events impacted? how you consume product announcements in community discussions. Yeah, it, 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 it really has. I mean, it's pretty much to a large degree. I mean, it, I'm, I'm now just receiving broadcasted information. All of the, you know, the, most of these sessions are pre-recorded. Yeah. Uh, there's no opportunity to interact with the speaker. In the best of cases, there's an Ask the Expert session afterwards. That's good. Um, when you can line that up behind it, that's that's I think is what's needed and, to be effective. And I also like how they throttled the number of people that could participate in yeah. those real time sessions, so it's not just yeah. over, overwhelming with thousands of people in in one of those rooms. But even those, they're they're not really that interactive. You you post a question and a moderator. I've been on, I was on both sides of that. Uh, you post a question, a moderator decides whether or not it can be answered, and someone answers it. And that's it's just kind of lobbing it over the wall to some degree. It just doesn't match that experience of being in person and having a dialogue back and forth and back and forth with clarifications, even during a session. So it it you know it feels a whole lot more like product announcements to me than it does you know you know that's in some cases it's what it is than right. it but than it does a conference where you you know you're you're absorbing this stuff it's 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 organic you're in with other people talking about things you know it's totally missing that side of things so has it has it affected it greatly and frankly negatively um, although there are really good aspects to this too there are some real positives we should take away you know so if i can use my as a former microsoft employee use my microsoft microsoft speak here is that really what this is is that there's an opportunity for yes. partners and for community people for mvps like like the two of us to um to to build off of this uh this on-demand content that's out there and to go and do like sessions, uh, you know, uh, webinars, things on that, yep. where we're doing that in depth and inviting Microsoft people, the product team members to participate in some of those things. So, yep. you know, it's, uh, I, I agree with you. I, I love the the interaction, that side of it. I mean, one of my favorite things about Ignite uh, and uh, the, like Build, I've I've just done the online. I'm just not a, I'm not a dev, so I've never, never done right. it. Yeah. But Inspire and Ignite, the best things about those events um, are like, I rarely go to sessions. It's right. all about going over to the product team booth areas, talking with the people that are building and supporting and marketing these products and as well as the community, but then asking those in-depth questions, asking about specific scenarios, yeah. having that back and forth. It's, and it's even better. I know, I know it's more me than you, but, uh, but you're bumping into those same people at the party afterwards after they've had a couple of adult beverages. The, <laughs> the answers flow. It's, right. it's really, yeah, it's very convenient. Well, and that, that's what I, I actually really miss about, you know, I was uh, for years, it was a purple badge and had an office on campus. And uh, so I was able to go over and visit with the product teams. And, and it'd be like, I, I initially I get the, uh, the, you know, the, the official marketing, you know, description. I'd be like, yeah. I do the, it's me you're talking to here. And I'd usually get the, like, close the door, close the door. <laughs> and then have a conversation about it. Uh, and so yeah. I miss, I miss that as well. Well, number five here. So what are three newly announced products or features from Ignite that you plan to perform a deep dive into? Anything else? Catch your yeah, I, 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 I'm obviously going to play with this new architecture, um, poke around with it. It has some real immediate impact for us, um, our business. We, we include uh, uh, this architecture in, in our solution in some cases. Um, uh, and then there's the uh, there, there's a new visual that's available in, in Power BI, the smart narratives visual, uh, where basically you can have a text box and it tells a little story about the data that happens to be in your data set. And it's brilliant because you know you can you can filter, or click a data element on your page, and that text itself is going to update accordingly. I, I, I really uh, I really can't wait to play with that. And um, Frankly, this Project Nucleus um, is going to be interesting. I don't, you know, we do data collection from the graph and and, and from SharePoint. I don't think that's going to have immediate uh, applicability to what we're doing, but 
technologically, yeah, bringing lists offline is something that's, uh, I think, pretty slick. I want to see how that works. So I'm yeah. just kind of interested in that. Yeah. There, there are a few really cool uh, list, Microsoft list features, you know, the, mm. the undo, redo, the, uh, you know, at mention notifications is part of yep. this big, but, uh, but yeah, that's that's one. Uh, you know, it's funny, John. It's like two two things that are at the top of my list to go in review because I need to do some cleanup on my Azure environments. But is the Azure Auto Manage, yeah, so that optimization, that capability. And there's, I know that there's some third party solutions that are out there. Uh, so I've not done enough in depth to know the differences between some of those Sharky's capabilities. Got some interesting stuff there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then the other one is the big one is that you know Azure the Azure Communication Service and Dynamics um, solution. Yeah. So that's a big one for you know whatever the size of your organization. Um, you know that that could be a just an amazing solution to better align your sales, marketing, and support people around the their the customers and with that end to end phone solution. It's pretty totally awesome. Agree. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's all good stuff. All right, uh, and let's see, number six. So for someone who was not able to attend, what should they focus on first from the news and content out of Microsoft Ignite? Well, my, my comment on this, I'll just, I'll really repeat it here is, um, if you weren't able to attend this Ignite, guess what? Great news, because you can. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty much all, every all of those sessions are available online. And frankly, your, your experience is not gonna be significantly degraded from someone who was able to attend. I mean, with the exception of that, the, you know, the question and answer sessions that I was talking about, you're going to be able to see the information as it was presented, replay it, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the one thing I would comment on this, and it's, you know, you hear that even for those who were able to uh, attend this, it was because it was remote, everybody tried to cram it into their usual work day. I did not. <laughs> I took yeah. the time uh, I would normally spend to, to focus on this stuff and focus on this stuff. So set aside the time to watch these things. Don't get interrupted because an email comes in, right? Focus, go go, go through this stuff as if you were sitting in the room and you're gonna get a lot more out of it. You know, I'll make this comment again, I did during the tweet jam, but I, I think uh, with the such a high volume of sessions, there's a couple things. Um, one, uh, that there were a number of things that I didn't find in the schedule builder that I don't know what I did wrong to not find it. I would hear about things through the social channels and be like, crap, what was that thing? Uh, and, and so that, you know, they had kind of silos of where you go and search and did to build out your, your schedule around, like the official sessions versus the community stuff. There was a lot of on-demand content that was just published when the show arrived. Um, and, you know, for us, we're used to going through the schedule and seeing what's in what slot and picking which one we're going to we're going to watch. Well, that kind of that if you use the schedule builder, that kind of all fall off on, on Thursday at yeah. the end of Thursday. And if you weren't looking for that, you didn't know it was there. That's true. Right. And so but the, the benefit to all that, of course, because even those sessions that were live and repeated uh, is, is that as I'm going back through the schedule and finding these things and adding them to my backpack. Feature, yeah, backpack is uh, awesome. Which is which is one of the reasons, as you say, even if you missed it this whole week, if you were you know on vacation somewhere and uh, they let you back into your country and uh, with the travel restrictions, um, you can still go. I believe you can still go register to get access to everything, and it's free. Really? Yeah, you, know, it, it, you should be able to because, but uh, but get in there and then you'll be able to con add, build out a schedule, find all that stuff, add it to your backpack, and go at your leisure and go through all that content. Well, that backpack, and it's useful just from a sharing standpoint. I know Ed, um, business partner Ed, you know Ed, um, uh, ahead of time he registered, built out a backpack, and then took the Word file that you can save it as and just posted it to our network, saying, here's what I'm going to be watching. You might be interested in some of this. Boom. Yeah. Real yep. quick access to this stuff. So that's yeah, great. Exactly. And then the final question that I always like to ask for these Microsoft events is if you could give one piece of advice to Microsoft leadership, what would it be? You know, pertaining to the topic of ignite of course yeah my my comment on that was simply don't think that uh online events are going to replace in-person events from an effectiveness standpoint moving forward just i know we've had to do this um i know we're going to be doing this till the end of june at the very least just in terms of um uh, what microsoft is, uh, has has stated but uh looking at this saying oh maybe we could trim a few dollars you're losing a lot you're losing your community if you do that i think in the long term i think the community can hold together 
Um, we know we're going through some tough, tough times, but uh, long term, if you start to treat the community as just some broadcast thing, um, I think it's going to fall away. So, so let's not let's 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 get back to in-person events as soon as we can. Agreed. I, and I I made a couple comments at the end there as well. I, I, I think that there's, I mean, the obvious value of in-person is the networking, the conversations, all the things that, yeah. again, it's not about the, the sessions. It's never been about the, the, the sessions. sessions. Sessions are great. They give you something to talk about. But yeah. Right. But, uh, you know, the keynotes, which you could do, and I, I'm one of these people, even for all the events that I go there, I would typically do some of these events. I would do the keynotes, watch them streaming via my hotel room rather okay. than go down yep. to it and then go straight to the expo hall where, where I would live most of the, the week during these events and for yep. all those interactions. Um, so it's great that somebody made the comment. In fact, it was Matt Wade who made the comment about how like what the positive of this is that so many more people can participate. I'm like, right. That is a great argument for yep. post post COVID having hybrid events, doing more online to make that content more accessible. Oh yeah. But it's, it's not one or the other. It's not one or the other. Right, yeah, it, they're not mutually exclusive. Let's do a lot of this online stuff for those people who can't attend in person. I think that's great. So you're, you're just co totally extending it, but then also have the in-person experience. So you get the best of both worlds. Right, exactly. Well, John, thanks so much for your time today. People want to find out more about you and about uh, Tigraph. Where do they go? What do they do? Tigraph.com. My blog is uh, whitepages.unlimitedviz.com. Um, my Twitter handle is at DiverDown1964. So uh, you'll find me one way or another if you if you uh, if you go 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 to those sources. And another great example of 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 what Tigraph does certainly for these events is you go out again to uh, uh, links. Is it link or links? Link. 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 Tigraph. Com slash collab talk and you'll find uh, the event today and past events. That's Tigraph for Twitter right there. Yep. That's right. All right. Thanks a lot, John. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Christian.